Basil Hugh Banger Jr., also called The Owl, was an American criminal, burglar, and prison escape artist. Although he was a successful stick-up artist during the 1920s and early 1930s, he is best remembered for his involvement in the hoax kidnapping of Chicago mobster Jake the Barber Factor. In 1954, nearly 20 years later, a federal judge declared the kidnapping charge a fraud and that Bangard had most likely been wrongly convicted due to the involvement of the Chicago outfit and corrupt Chicago officials. This is the story of the owl, Basil Bangard. But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the Past Crimes channel and hit that like button at the end. Basil Hugh Bangard was born in Burville, Michigan, on September 11, 1901. One year after going to college, he dropped out to become a professional car thief, stealing over 100 cars in the Detroit area before his arrest in 1926. Around this time, Bangard acquired his criminal nickname, The Owl, because of his abnormally large eyes. Bangard escaped from the Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary after serving only a few months of his sentence. He jumped 25 feet from a window he was washing and over the prison's wall, escaping through the marsh on the other side. He made it as far as Montana before being apprehended and returned to prison. He escaped again a year later, but was apprehended while attempting to steal a car in Pittsburgh in October 1928. Bangert was escorted back to prison by U.S. Marshals this time. After being taken to a federal building and left alone in an office for a few minutes, Bangert called local police and claimed to be a federal agent who had been assaulted and overpowered by his prisoner, Basil Bangert. He continued claiming that Bangard had escaped after handcuffing him and described the U.S. Marshal who was escorting him, noting that he was a dangerous, armed felon and a police imposter. When police arrived, they took the escort into custody while Bangard managed to flee in the confusion. Bangard was arrested once more in February 1930 and was returned to Leavenworth, but quickly escaped again. In January 1932, he was arrested in Detroit for armed robbery and taken to the South Bend, Indiana jail, but he escaped by throwing pepper in the face of a guard and then shooting his way out. Bangard headed south and eventually made his way to Chicago, where he joined Roger Tuohy's organization. Tuohy, a veteran bootlegger from the days of Prohibition, was then in the midst of a fierce rivalry with Frank Nitti over labor racketeering. Bangard became a major asset to Tui during this time, and no doubt an active participant in Tui's war with the Chicago outfit, but only one incident is recorded in which Bangard was specifically involved. On January 31, 1933, Nitty's gunman assassinated Jimmy O'Brien in front of the Garage nightclub. O'Brien was one of Tui's union men and the most recent victim of the feud between Tui and Nitty. A week later, a man identified as Bangard returned to the nightclub, where he stepped out of a sedan and tossed a bomb through the front doors of the club. No one was hurt, but the club was severely damaged. When the Chicago outfit staged the kidnapping of one of their own members, Jake the Barber, Factor, in July 1933, it was expected to delay his extradition to stand trial for fraud in the Great Britain, as well as rid themselves of rival bootlegger Roger Tui, who would be blamed for the kidnapping. Members of the British consulate refused to believe the story and won an extradition order from the United States Supreme Court. In desperation, Factor and the Chicago mob attempted to legitimize the kidnapping by arranging a pickup with the alleged kidnappers. At this point, Bangert and his partner Charles Connors, a.k.a. Ice Wagon, were brought into the plan. They were hired as bagmen and told that all they had to do was pick up the money, make it look real, and they could keep the ransom money. On August 15th, the two arrived at the scheduled drop on Mannheim Road, just outside of Chicago. When they arrived, they were met by 300 Chicago police officers and FBI agents. To make matters worse, the ransom package contained only $500. Despite the obvious double cross, Bangert and Connors managed to escape after a wild shootout. Despite being set up, Bangert and Connors chose to flee rather than seek vengeance against the Chicago outfit. 
On November 15, 1933, they teamed with Ike Costner and Ludwig Dutch Schmidt to hijack a U.S. mail truck of $105,000 in Charlotte, North Carolina. By the time the second trial for Factor's kidnapping began on February 13, 1934, Bangert and Costner had been apprehended. Both men agreed to testify for the prosecution despite facing lengthy prison sentences for the Charlotte mail truck robbery. Although Costner was not involved in the ransom pickup, when Connors was found murdered on March 14th, he took Connors' place and falsely stated that Roger Tui had hired himself and Bangard for the factor kidnapping. When Bangard took the stand, he denied these claims and attempted to explain that the kidnapping was staged. Bangard's testimony was largely disregarded, and Tui, Bangard, and two others were convicted and sentenced to 99 years in prison. Bangert and Tui escaped Joliet with Edward Dulac, Martlick Nelson, William Stewart, St. Clair McInerney, and James O'Connor on October 9, 1942, after years of unsuccessful appeals. The FBI quickly joined the manhunt. Bangert and Tui were suspected of participating in a robbery in Melrose Park, Illinois, on December 19, which netted $20,000, but no charges were filed against them. McInerney and O'Connor were killed in a gun battle with federal agents less than two weeks after their escape, and the rest were apprehended on December 29, 1942. J. Edgar Hoover observed the raid and took part in what would be his last personal arrest. The convicts were sentenced to even longer prison terms for their escape, and Bangard was returned to Stateville on January 2, 1943, where he was placed in solitary confinement. He was then transferred to Alcatraz, escorted by 18 federal marshals. He spent the rest of his time in the prison kitchen, where he worked in the bakery with former public enemy, Alvin Carpus. Bangert and Carpus, dubbed the Carpus Kitchen Crew by inmates, allegedly learned to make wine and other alcoholic beverages in the kitchen from cherry pie juices and other ingredients. The challenge was to keep from becoming an alcoholic, Carpus wrote in his memoirs later. A federal judge ruled in 1954 that the factor kidnapping was a hoax and that Bangert and Tui were most likely wrongfully convicted in a case involving the Chicago outfit and corrupt Chicago officials. Bangert was transferred back to Stateville in 1959, and eventually his kidnapping conviction was overturned and the mail robbery charges were dropped for time served. He was released the following year, when at age 60, he was reunited with his longtime girlfriend, Maid Blacock. His aunt had also left him a small inheritance 15 years before. Bangert retired to a small island in Puget Sound, 